So now let's begin with the medium and small vessel vasculitis. I thought it would be a great idea to just review the very basics histology uh, of the arterial wall. So the first innermost layer is tunica intima, which is just the first layer in the lumen. If we start from the luminal side, that is made up of the endothelial cells. Next, we have tunica media, and which is made up of smooth muscle cells fibers, and the elastic tissue, which is in between the intima and media, is the internal elastic lamina. The outermost layer after media is tunica adventitia or externa, and the elastic tissue in between the in, in between the media and externa is external elastic lamina. The the network channels, which actually the channels of blood vessels which supply the large arteries is called vasa visorum and the channels of blood vessels the small tiny vessels that supply the peripheral nerves is called vasa nervosa the first medium and small vessel vasculitis is polyarthritis nodosa polyarthritis nodosa is a systemic vasculitis of small or medium sized muscular arteries the most common arteries involved are the renal and the visceral vessels and it typically spares the pulmonary circulation the other visceral vessels uh, which are involved uh, other than kidney can be uh, heart, liver and GI vessels in the descending order. The most important cause or the risk factor for polyarthritis nodosa is chronic hepatitis B infection. And the idea is that the hepatitis B antigens actually deposit in the affected vessels. And then our immune uh, cells like neutrophils and mononuclear cells, they tend to affect those uh, antigens and this leads to the formation of immune complexes in the affected vessels. Also, in the acute phase, there is fibrinoid necrosis. Fibrinoid necrosis is the eosinophilic necrosis involving the blood vessels. This diagram shows the fibrinoid necrosis. And remember that fibrinoid necrosis is also seen in malignant hypertension and polyarthritis nodosa. These are the two common pathologies in which fibrinoid necrosis is usually seen. Thus, this immune complex deposition leads to ulceration, infarct formation, ischemic atrophy, or hemorrhages in the affected vessels. This whole inflammatory process is also weakening the arterial wall, and thus it can lead to aneurysm and rupture of the wall as well. And mind you that aneurysm is the ballooning or dilatation of the blood vessel wall, which can rupture. This disease usually occurs in 40 to 50 years of age, but it can occur in all age groups. Now let's talk about the clinical feature and the patient's present presentation. Uh, there are usually non-specific symptoms like fever, myalgia, arthralgia, and weight loss. But since it is the uh, multi-system disease as well, it can come in manifestations of uh, multi-system disease as well. So there can be skin lesions and the most common skin lesions found are palpable purpura, ulcerations, infarctions, and libido reticularis. So this is an image which shows palpable purpuras. Purpuras are the palpable and raised non-blanching hemorrhages. This skin lesion is libido reticularis. Libido reticularis is the mottling and purplish discoloration of the skin which is caused by swelling of the venules usually due to the uh, blood obstruction, um, due to the obstruction of capillaries by small blood clots. This whole necrosis, inflammation and vessel occlusion in majority of the patient use, uh, it leads to the arthritis of vasa nervosa. Uh, I mentioned previously that vasa nervosa is a channel of vessels that, sur that supplies the peripheral nerves with the blood. And if those uh, vasa nervosa, uh, if those vasa nervorum get arthritis, they lead to neuropathy. And this neuropathy is actually symmetrical and it occurs in both sensory and motor, motor function loss. The other clinical features can be uh, severely accelerating hypertension because of the renal artery involvement. And now the diagnosis. Diagnosis is usually done by angiography, which will show the aneurysms and smooth muscle narrowing of the, the, the visceral vessel, any of the vessels which it has involved like mesenteric, hepatic, renal, and the other option could be a biopsy. Treatment is usually with high-dose steroids and immunosuppressants.